Walker caught it somehow. The Cowboys OT, presented by the Texas Lottery, is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Sleep Number, the Sleep Number 360 smart bed helps everyone from parents to pros improve their performance through quality sleep. Only at a Sleep Number store. NFL Game Pass, you'll never miss a game again. Enjoy full access to coaches film and game replays from week one to the Super Bowl. Subscribe at DallasCowboys.com slash Game Pass. And by the Texas Lottery. Play the Dallas Cowboys scratch ticket today. It's your ticket for a chance to win big. 41 to 16, the Dallas Cowboys fall in a battle on Thanksgiving Day for first place in the NFC East as they fall to the Washington football team. For the first time since 2012, Washington has swept the Cowboys in the regular season. It's only the sixth time they've done so in franchise history. Welcome in to Cowboys OT here from the star in Frisco as we break down the 41 to 16 losses. The Cowboys now fall to three and eight on the 2020 campaign. Kyle Yeomans is here with you alongside a trio of former Dallas Cowboys. We've got Nate Newton, Barry Church and Isaiah stand back and guys just when you thought since that last Washington loss where they fell 25 to three in week seven, you started to gain some momentum. Well, now it's kind of back to the drawing board for Mike McCarthy and company as they fall in this one and it really was not in the fashion that you want to see any game go down Isaiah. Nope, it is definitely not. Um, I think, you know, this team, as much as we talked about their resilience and what they faced this year um, and their ability to bounce back and the momentum that they've built and that they were able to sustain over the past few weeks, uh, we saw that all the air get taken out of the room um, as soon as Martin got hurt. We saw Martin get hurt. We saw Irving get hurt. Uh, you kind of saw these new these other guys come in and they all kind of licked at each other and it just – it was just like, what do we do now? And from that point on, you kind of felt the momentum start going down. It was, it was almost like everybody was waiting on, on enough bad plays to happen so that everybody can kind of throw the towel in. And in that fourth quarter, seemingly everybody threw the towel in. And it was really disappointing to see from the coaches um, making bad calls and start, you know, grabbing stuff out there, you know, high school backpacks, um, all the way to the players giving up and letting, letting Gibson run all over them. Um, you know, missed assignments all over the map. Everybody uh, failed to do what they needed to do in the fourth quarter, and it came to a came to a big halt. Yeah, like like I mentioned earlier, man, this this was a tough one, and you're completely right with the uh, Zach Martin thing. When when he went down, it was like a dagger to the whole team. You just saw just like everybody kind of deflated. The body language was bad, um, and it's just like, man, once again, we lost another one of our all pro offensive linemen, and and it just went downhill from there. Like you said, I mean. Just the, the, the calls that were made out there were just perplexing to me. I mean, not only the fake field goal or the fake uh, punt on your side of the 50 yard line, but also when you go out there, it's fourth and inches. You got a power back back there in Ezekiel Elliott, and you decide to throw a hitch out there. It, it's just something that was perplexing to me. Um, and like you said, they let Gibson run wild. This is exactly what happened the first game. When we talked about it in pregame, we knew we had to slow this guy down. We had to get him um, under control. That way we can force Alex Smith to throw and try to beat us. But we weren't able to do that. They were able to pick their poison. Um, Gibson was able to run, run all over us. But it seemed like he was running through arm tackle after arm tackle after arm tackle on his way to three touchdowns out there. He had a heck of a day. Alex Smith was able, he was efficient out there. He wasn't the Alex Smith of old, but he was efficient getting the ball, spreading it around to everybody. Defensively, we just didn't get enough pressure on him. And he was able to do what he wanted to do, as well as Gibson. McKissick was great on third down. I mean, it was just an all-around beatdown for our team. And it was happening in the second half. I mean, 21 unanswered points in the fourth quarter is unheard of, and you just can't win games like that. You have to find a way offensively when things are not going well. You've lost one of your stud guys in the um, – right tackle, and you have to just make a way. I mean, but when you, when your defense makes a play, gets you within seven, eight yards, and then you run plays that are not positive plays, even if it would just been a run three times, run the ball three times, and just get a field goal out of that right there, but it's the way you did it. I mean, with reverses, with uh, fake punts, and it, it just, it, it, there's a bold, well, it doesn't show your team that you're believing in what you're trying to do. I mean, uh, the element of surprise, we've been trying to do fake this and fake that for the whole season. So people are aware of what we're doing. So they automatically set themselves in, in, in prevent mode. So uh, 
from, from the coaches to the players, it, it was a team loss. Like sometimes we say a team victory. This was a team loss. It was on play well. all three phases for the Dallas Cowboys did struggle in this one. The offense certainly had their struggles as well as they only converted on third down four times in the game. When we come back on Cowboys OT, we'll address what went wrong on the offensive side of the football right after this. On Cowboys OT following a 41 to 16 loss as the Cowboys fall to the Washington football team here on this Thanksgiving day. One of the big reasons for the loss was really the struggle for the Dallas Cowboys not only on third down where they were four of 13 but also in the red zone where they failed to convert on multiple occasions for scoring a touchdown and ultimately had to settle with field goals and guys whenever we look at this offense the numbers aren't great I mean you go through it and you see the passing yards for Mandy Dalton 25 of 35 215 yards he's not necessarily the one to blame here the offense just never really got going on the ground and the offensive line certainly struggled when the tackles went down. Yeah, overall, I feel like Andy Dalton actually played a relatively good game. Mm -hmm. I think I know we were watching the game. We we're saying how well of a game, how, how well of a job he was doing managing the game. Right, he was managing the game very well. He, his efficiency was up there. Um, I think he hit by one of the time we were really paying attention to it. He had only had like three incompletions, um, and then we start seeing some of the things creep in. Right, um, there was some there were some opportunities that he had to get at, to move around the pocket that he didn't really do uh, do very well with. You saw the breakdown in the, in the offensive line and their ability to hold off this defensive line. Um, and I think, you know, like I said, in that, especially in that fourth quarter, you started really feeling how Washington's defensive line started remembering what it was like last time they faced. And they're like, oh, we can take over. We can dominate. And they looked around and saw, oh, there is no Zach Martin. Oh, there is no Irving over here. Oh, so we can, this is the same dudes that we were playing against when we kicked the butt last time. So this is something that we have to take care of, man. Um, but overall, Andy Dalton played well. And at the end there, some of those things weren't his fault. Exactly. I mean, some of those things were definitely not his fault, like that interception at the end. Overall, I feel like he played a pretty good game. Like you said, I think his ball placement was well. Um, I think he was efficient when he needed to be. Um, just overall, I think, man, towards the end, I think it just it just it just piled on on him. The loss of Zach Martin, and then like you said, uh, Chase Young and those boys, they got to pin their ears back. And like we said in pregame, if we have a good balance, if we can keep this defense off balance, then we have a good chance to win. But when we had to resort to just Andy Dalton throwing the ball, it was a done deal. I mean, Chase Young, those boys, they they pinned their ears back and they just went after our pretty much patchwork offensive line. But Kyle, you 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 hit the no, you hit it right on the nose, man. That that four of 13 on third down, you, you just can't be that. You can't be that and win. That's too low of a percentage. And, and what it tells me is you're not sustaining drives. You're not putting long drives together to, to give your defense a rest out there. To me, the defense was out there entirely too long, and it showed. It showed, especially in the fourth quarter. And to me, I mean, we can't do that and want to be considered one of the top teams in a playoff team. So we're definitely going to have to prove them on third down and just overall as a team. Those third downs are ugly. And we said we had to run the ball to be efficient enough so that we can, can maintain on third downs and give these guys an opportunity to do what they do at wide receiver position. But we did not do that. And so these guys in the middle that we were we were sustaining that early in the game, keeping those three horses out of the mm -hmm. out of the deal so and they could step up and be efficient. But when they was not able to do that right there, and as the game went on, they got more and more confident. They did not have to rush or blitz anybody, even though they did that late late in the game and threw yeah. us off. You know, they didn't have to do that primarily. And as the pocket closed down, it made Dalton spin out and come out. And that fell right into Montez Sweat, and that fell mm -hmm. right into Chase. And big things happened as the game went on. Like you said, in that fourth quarter, it was a total collapse. Yeah. Well, and mm -hmm. even you look at this offense, and they give the ball over to the Washington offense in their own territory three different times. You had yeah. the Zeke fumble. You had going forward on fourth down and end up throwing the football, and that goes incomplete. That results in a touchdown the other, day, uh, other way for the Washington football team and then most notably on special teams and we talk about the play calling the fake punt where Cedric Wilson had the ball and it looked like he was going to throw didn't end up look like he uh, he had anybody to throw to so he elected to run that didn't even get back to the line of scrimmage so Isaiah what do you think about this uh, this play calling and kind of the situational work from the offense that puts you in trouble. It was terrible. The play call, and specifically for that situation, is completely terrible. It's something that the coaches, it's inexcusable. You can't put your team in that position. You're playing a very competitive game. This is a division, uh, you know, to, to take the division, you're playing a very competitive game, and then you go out there and you make a play like that that can totally flip the, the momentum and the result of this game on its head. Um, you, you, you instill in your team that you don't have any confidence in them when you make calls like that, and that's exactly what we saw happen, that meltdown following that. 
Yeah, it, it was a terrible call overall. I mean, you just don't make that decision. You don't, you don't do a fake call when you're on your side of the 50 yard line on your 24. Because, I mean, look, the positives that can come with it, you'll get a first down, but you're still on that side of the 50. The negatives is just piling up. You give Washington the ball back with such a short field that they're going to score. The run game was on point overall the whole evening. So for me, it was just terrible play calling. And once again, we got to, I mean, we got to get, you know, Zeke right with these fumbles, man. He's coughing it up way too much. McKissick, Gibson, they did their job. You know, they were patient, and they have a quarterback that knows what to do in those situations. Mm -hmm. But too bad for the Cowboys. You got to talk about that whenever you, you give the ball to an offense that – fundamentally is sound and that's exactly what Washington brings to the table with Alex Smith and the pair of those backs in the backfield. We're going to talk about how the defense responded in that regard. 41 points, but were they all the defense's fault when we come back here on Cowboys OT? Twenty-one unanswered points for Washington and the football team in the fourth quarter results in a 41-16 loss for the Dallas Cowboys at home at AT&T Stadium here on Thanksgiving. Kyle Yeoman's back with you here for Cowboys OT as we break down this loss with a trio of former Cowboys. And whenever you look at this defense, 41 points, it's not what you want to see on the scoreboard. But Isaiah, where was the defense to blame in this? They certainly had their lapses, but was it 41 points worth? No, it wasn't 41 points worth. And, and, you know, and to Nate's point, we were talking about behind the scenes here, you know, the coaches put them in bad positions. You know, and, they, and they've done it all year long. Um, not, not as much over the past few weeks um, as they've continued to gain momentum, but um, especially today, it was almost like they had a relapse, right? Mm -hmm. They had a relapse in, in decision making. And, you know, we, always, we keep going back to the, to the fake punt call, but you're down by four points. You're down by four points in a very competitive game, and all of a sudden you call a play that has a very low probability of being successful, especially when you've shown things on film repeatedly that this is the type of play that you like to run. Mm -hmm. So as Nate said, you're, you're on high alert already. You are on high alert when you're on the punt return team, and obviously that doesn't go our way, and now all of a sudden the defense is having to go back on the field with 20 yards to defend when these guys are about to go up and score some points. It's, it's tough. Um, defense played okay into that second-half meltdown. Yeah, I feel like the defense uh, played one of his better games throughout this season, and, and that's not saying much at all, but I think they played one of their better games. But like you said, all those 41 points, they weren't all on them altogether. I mean, they, they were put in terrible positions. Like you said, the fake punt, um, just the turnovers in general, they were put in uh, short fields and bad positions. But they did have their fair share of this responsibility of this 41 points. I mean, that second drive Washington had, it could have been a, a three and out, and they could have been, you know, getting the ball back with a lead, but there was two penalties in there, two third down penalties. And you can't have penalties on the money down. I mean, that's when you're supposed to get off the field. That's when you're supposed to get your rest in and let the offense do their work. But, I mean, it was two holding penalties. That, that proved to be extremely costly as Washington was able to drive down the field, get that momentum going, score a touchdown. Then they went back at him again and scored another touchdown. So, the defense, I feel like they played one of their better games. It could have been better overall, but um, they got to clean up the mistakes as far as the penalties or we'll never see a, a, a good defensive performance. You can't be fourth and inches. Give it back to the defense. The defense gets you the ball and takes it down and almost scores for you. Then you, you, you only get three out of that. You, really. you can't call a punt where you're on the 50. You, the guy in reverse is going 20 yards back, barely gets back. You put your defense to back to the wall. You can't do that. Your secondary is riddled with injuries. You cannot do that. That is the bottom line. Coaches – players, uh, anybody that's concerned, myself, us guys up here, we cannot do that. And the defense has been playing better, and you took away all the momentum in the fourth quarter. It just melted down on them. It seemed like the defense stepped up in a couple different situations in this game, most notably the interception that ended up going to Jay, Jalen Smith. But really, that was the defensive line that forced mm -hmm. that pressure, forced that interception. And that was a turning point in the game that it looked like you were down at seven at that point. You only ended up with three, but it was still 20 to 16. So the defensive lapses kind of came after that, you talk about the energy kind of falling off a cliff on the defensive side of the football. That's what happened in the fourth quarter, Isaiah, and that's what ended up in the 41 points. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was, like I said, that second half meltdown. And it, the defense can only take so much. You can only put them <laughs> in so many bad situations. And they can only bail, them, bail, them, bail, them, bail the entire team out so many times. But after a while, guess what? There's going to be a little crack. <laughs> going to be a little crack in the foundation. Um, and that crack came in the form of Gibson, right? And mm -hmm. Gibson found that crack, and he, he blew that thing smooth open, right? Um, he bursted the pipes. And, you know, and at that point, the team starts having a lack of confidence in themselves. And they say, oh, crap, here we go again. Yeah, and you're right. I mean, we're used to, to Zeke being that ground and pound and wearing yes, those defenses yes. down. And it worked in the complete opposite for us this week. I mean, Gibson came out there, and from snap one, he just showed that he had that forward lean. And he was pounding and pounding us down until – we couldn't take it no more. And the fourth quarter exploded, and they went for 21 unanswered points. But overall, I feel like this defense, they played better up till that fourth quarter. And I have to say, Gibson just warmed down. You know what? Barbara, Gibson, uh, McKissick, these guys played well. The quarterback uh, managed the game well. And then, like you said, all of a sudden it was leaks, leaks, and you're trying to fill every leak, every leak, and all of a sudden 37-yard burst. The dam broke open, mm -hmm. and the game was over. Then we come back, and our tackle make a bad decision, get our quarterback jammed up, and all of a sudden it's, a, it's another interception. Game over. Up until that point, it was just, uh, 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 what, 11 points? Before that, it was four points, and it, you can't stop. You don't have enough fingers to fill all the leaks. Can't do it uh, all the time, especially when you're, you're backed up against the wall. And there's going to be certainly a lot to talk about whenever it comes to Mike McCarthy. And uh, this week of practice, you've got Baltimore coming up next Thursday. Let's hear from Mike McCarthy after the game. We're going to hear that on the other side of the break as we continue here on Cowboys OT following the 41 to 16 loss. For the first time since 2012, Washington sweeps the Dallas Cowboys in the regular season with a 41 to 16 win on Thanksgiving Day. Let's go back out to AT&T Stadium and hear from Mike McCarthy following the loss. Uh, questions, please, David. Yeah, Mike, can you start with the decision on the uh, the fake punt uh, deep in your own end zone? What the rationale was there and, and, and how that play broke down? Well, I mean, it's definitely a, a big play opportunity is the way you view it. There's there's, there's certain um, things you look for tendency-wise on, on when and where, um, you know. But, you know, it's uh, obviously we didn't execute it, and, and and as those things go, I mean, when, obviously it's ultimately my responsibility when particularly a play like that doesn't, doesn't work. But uh, we're trying to generate a big play um, at that point in the game. Um, Prior, you know, the information that you look for going into it, it, it was a solid call. Mike, what has the last couple 24 to 48 hours been like for this team? I mean, it's, you know, I think stating the obvious, uh, extremely difficult. I mean, um, obviously with the passing of Marcus Paul, I mean, it was, you know, a lot of heavy hearts, but I, I can't um, say enough about our football team about our players, uh, the way they came out, started the game. And, um, you know, we had a number of adverse things to deal with throughout the game. Uh, we just, you know, we didn't get it going to, the, the, to where we wanted to get it going in the second half. But um, uh, you find out a lot about uh, people in these times. And uh, I can't tell you how proud I am as this football team. Uh, but yes, it's, it's, it's a week that uh, I don't think any of us will ever forget. Mike, can you also talk that there was that point in the uh, late in the first half where you had the fourth and one, uh, a little bit less than fourth and one, and, and the call there to, to throw the ball downfield and what happened? Oh, it was a clean matchup. Uh, obviously, had one on one on a perimeter, and uh, you know, obviously the result wasn't what we were looking for. I, I think everybody's seen what happened on the play, uh, but it's you know it's uh, those, those are plays that you. You look to create opportunities, and uh, it, was a, it was a good play call. And, you know, we had one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, and uh, we just didn't convert. Plenty of questions surrounding the play calling from Mike McCarthy and his staff following the 41 to 16 loss. But guys, if we listen to Mike McCarthy there, of course, there's still heavy hearts around this Cowboys franchise. And normally that would maybe lead to a slow start. It wasn't the slow start. It was the way they finished in this game that really set them back. Yeah, and, and I just want to touch on some of the things Coach, you know, referred to. Obviously, obviously, we all understand the heavy hearts, and we there's no question about that. Um, he was he was one of my former coaches as well, so I, I understand that. Um, that that's going to weigh on you. But as guys go out there and they do their job, um, you heard him allude to the fact that they came out of the first half and they took care of business. 
We all agree with that. Um, they, they did that. They had some they had some adversity that you heard coach refer to in terms of their injuries at the tackle position. All right, we understand that situation. But now we get into the second half and we're in a competitive ball game. The fake punt, he said it was a solid call. I disagree. That's not a solid call in that situation. You don't allow your team to be in a successful position. Um, the fourth and inches pass. I disagree with that call as well. Yes, you do have one-on-one -on -one and you, you believe that your guy can beat their guy. That's cool, but what's the probability of your quarterback getting the ball and delivering a good ball to a guy who has man-to-man -man coverage all over him versus giving it back to your guy who's building confidence in the backfield by the name of Ezekiel Elliott? Give him the rock, get fourth and inches, instill confidence in that offensive line that's now playing that you trust them. Yeah, I mean, look, football is a 60-minute game. And, you know, contrary to belief, you usually win that game or lose that game off of a couple plays, three or four plays. And to me, I have two that are just, just head scratchings right now. I mean, one is that, that fake punt that you, you pull on your side of the 50-yard line, which I, I just don't understand it. And then the fourth and one. You had a fourth and inches. It wasn't even one yard, full yard. It was fourth and inches. I mean, you have one of the best backs in the game in Ezekiel Elliott. He's a power back. He is a horse back there. You paid him $90 million. This guy can get you inches. And if not that, quarterback sneak it with Andy Dalton. We saw that when they did the fourth and one. Andy Dalton snuck it for the first down. But you decided to drop back and pass it. Um, it's just perplexing to me. And overall, it's a head scratcher. And, and now we wonder why, you know, this team has been so up and down and been on a roller coaster ride. It's just uh, it starts up top. And the, decision, the decisions that the coaches are making, this one ended up losing the game for the boys. This was bottom line of black and blue football game. And uh, Washington was ready, re willing to get ugly with it, and we should have been willing to get ugly with it. At no point, I was, we was four points with it. At no point, we had to do any trickery. We, had, we, we didn't have to. We got a, one of the best backs, I think, in the league, Ezekiel Elliott. You got a quarterback sneak, as Barry Church said. It is no way in the world that you – and you have an interception. But you know what? Zeke, you got to quit fumbling. You cost your team some points, my man. It's time for everybody to get black and blue, get ugly, and finish the season playing disciplined assignment football. And whenever you talk about Ezekiel Elliott, all three of you guys mentioned his name as being a key cog in that offensive machine. And certainly he was held to just 32 yards in today's game. And the fumbling issue that we saw through the first five weeks of the season, and actually really the first seven weeks of the season, that had seemingly been rectified has now come back and reared its ugly head yet again. We're going to hear from Ezekiel Elliott coming back on the other side of the break as we continue on here on this Cowboys OT edition. Cowboys OT rolling on here from the star in Frisco following a very physical 41 to 16 loss. It's only the fifth team or the, excuse me the fifth time in Ezekiel Elliott's career where he's been held underneath 40 yards. He had 32 and a fumble. Here's what he had to say after the game. Um, uh, hey guys, uh, I just first wanted to start start this out by um, sending my condolences to the Paul family. Um, I want to thank the Paul family for sharing markers with us. Uh, he uh, meant so much to this team and, and had such a big part of everyone's everyday life. And um, we were just grateful to, that you guys, you know, uh, shared him with us. Um, yeah. All right, we'll take your questions now, please. The call, call was it just to, to get ready to play today, considering what happened uh, over the last couple of days, um, it, it, was, it was tough. You know, it's been definitely a, a rough couple of days. Um, and yeah. Obviously, you guys canceled that practice uh, Tuesday, and then you practiced Wednesday. What was the? I mean, you guys have to try to, you know, the show must go on. How hard was it just to just to get just to even come to the stadium today, just to to play a game of such importance? Um, it was definitely an emotional week for everyone. Uh, like I said, Marcus had such a big role in all of our our lives. Um, and just, I mean, every day he's the one leading the stretch. And so, I mean, we're lining up for practice, uh, getting ready to stretch. And you just you get that reminder um, that he, he's not here with us anymore. And, uh, it was, it, it definitely is tough. And, um, I mean, we just got to lean on each other. And um, 
and, and uh, help each other get through this tough time. As for the game, how hard is it to, to get going offensively at times? Say it again, I'm sorry. As, as for this game, um, how hard is it just to get going offensively uh, today? Um, yeah, it was um, it was definitely a little tough get, getting going. Uh, I mean, just you got to execute better, um, execute the game plan better, be better situationally, um, and convert convert third down so we can, you know, keep our defense off the field and give them a rest. Um, but, uh, I mean, we just got to build on it. What's up with that first possession you leave? Your left tackle, and then obviously you leave Zach. How, I mean, is, are you like, is your head spinning when you see those guys go down? Uh, yeah, definitely. Definitely uh, sucks, but, I mean, we're pro football players. This is pro football, and uh, we got to have the next man up mentality, and uh, we got to go play with what we have. Um, and I think, you know, we were in a good, we, we had ourselves in a good situation um, in this game. Um, we just got to figure out in the second half just to, the way to, you know, close it and, and just play better. Cowboys held to just 60 rushing yards in this matchup. And Ezekiel Elliott in two games this season against Washington, 22 carries for just 77 yards. That's underneath three and a half yards per carry. He has not scored in either game. Now, guys, whenever you look at the rushing offense in today's game, I mean, certainly it wasn't good, but it was also uh, a good credit to the defensive front from Washington. But Isaiah, what stood out to you as the biggest reason that this offense just couldn't get the ground game rolling? Um, I, I honestly think it's just their, their lack or inability or not wanting to commit to the run. I mean, you, you look at it, and you, you know, you already talked about it, Barry. Any other team that has a $90 million running back is going to give him the ball more than 10 times a game. I don't care what running back you are. You can go get dog on Barry Sanders. You can get Emma Smith. You can bring all those guys on the field at the same time. You're, they're not going to be able to get their feet underneath them carrying the ball 10 times, um, regardless if they have their starting offensive line in or whether they have injuries and they have their second or third string offensive line. They have to get some kind of rhythm, right? They got to get some tempo. They got to get a vibe of the game. They have to get a, a feel of the energy. They need to be able to, to feel what their offensive alignment, right? Those guys went down in the first quarter, right? So now all of a sudden I have other guys in there that I, weren't, I haven't been practicing with as, as much, and I need to get a sense of where they're at, what kind of blocking schemes they're having. So give them the ball, commit to it, just like you commit to throwing the ball on fourth and inches. Yeah, we, we need to get the ball to our $90 million man more than 10 times. I mean, we got to find a creative way to get this man the ball, whether it be lining him up at fullback and giving him little fullback dives or options or throwing him the ball, something. We got to figure out some way to get this man the ball. 10 touches is just not enough. And Zeke, we're going to need more out of you as well. I mean, we you have to be able to hold on to the football. I mean, look, this is this is a game of momentum and, and swings and changes each and every game. And when you go out there and you, and you fumble the ball like that, I mean, you gave Washington such an uplift that they were able to take control of the game and you deflated your team um, in the process. So for me, you got to control the ball and we need more out of you. You know, it's a belief system. It's a culture. It's what you believe in. Mr. Jones said earlier in the week uh, that Zeke was his best man. Well, you know what? Give it to your best man. Zeke is ready to able. Yeah, he need to quit fumbling, but you got to have a belief system. It was certainly a struggle for Ezekiel Elliott and something that the Cowboys thought they had maybe gotten rid of last week when he was over 100 yards. He is held to just 32 today in the loss. Washington certainly had the running game going on their side of the football. When we come back, we'll hear from Jalen Smith and what he had to say on the defensive performance in the loss. Washington takes over first place in the NFC East with a 41 to 16 win over the Cowboys here on Thanksgiving. The Cowboys had a chance late in this game. They were down by 7, 20 to 13. They had an interception from Jalen Smith. Here's what he had to say after the game. Hey, Jalen, uh, I know you and some of the other guys were talking after the Minnesota game about what a good position that puts you in. Do you feel today's loss against uh, Washington in the di division kind of puts you in a, in a very difficult spot going forward as far as accomplishing what you want? Uh, yes, very disappointing uh, loss. We, we had no intentions. Um, going into this week, everyone was confident. Um, uh, you know, s suffered a... A, a, just a tragic, a tragic loss in, in Marcus Paul, and um, he touched so many lives, um, all our lives, and, and, and families, and things of that nature. And 
Uh, we really wanted to come out and, and, and do it for, for God and for, and for Marcus. Um, and we didn't accomplish the mission. Uh, so it's, it's tough. Jalen, Coach McCarthy was saying that the team meeting on Saturday was powerful as you guys celebrated Marcus's life. I was wondering if you could tell us, just describe it, what that was like for you and, and the team. Just getting an opportunity to, 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 to celebrate his life and his impact um, and, and, and everything that he instilled in each individual that he, that, that he touched and met. Um, Five-time Super Bowl champion, uh, successful player and coach, um, and strength coach, just a great mentor and, and a, a servant leader. Um, I learned a lot from him um, in his time here, and um, you know, a, a lot of people got to share their stories on on how he on how he touched the individual. Was it pretty emotional last night, or was it more celebratory, or, or how would you describe overall the, the, the feel and the sense and the, and the spirit in the room? Both. Um, I would describe it as both um, because he's, he was just that kind of guy. Um, you knew exactly what you were going to get from him. Um, you were going to get his best. Um, he was going to be exact. Um, he was going to be elite and alert. And um, just may he rest in peace. Marcus Paul and deservedly so as he definitely had touched a lot of the lives of these players and really was very close with the linebacking core both with Leighton Van Der Esch and of course with Jalen Smith who we just heard there but guys when you looked at this defense today and we kind of talked about it in the earlier segments not all of the blame fell on them but they certainly missed a couple of opportunities to slow down this Washington offense. Yeah they did Kyle and um you know I think we all sat up here and watched, we watched the game and, we, and the thing that kept presenting itself, the thing that kept raising its head was the fact that our defense is not a very good tackling defense. Mm -mm. Um, there's plenty of opportunities that they have where when they, when they are in position and make plays, somehow, some way, somebody's either getting caught behind a block, <laughs> uh, either being, being on the wrong side of the leverage or they're simply just, their legs are just leaving them and they're trying to arm tackle grown men that get paid to run the ball. And that's, it's just not a recipe for success. We have to do better when we're in, when we're in positions to make plays. Yeah, I mean, you said it correctly. I mean, we are not a good tackling football team. Um, when you look at the plays that they're, they're trying to make out there, there was a couple of plays out there where Gibson got the ball. He was first contacted at least a yard behind the line of scrimmage. And somehow, some way, he was able to break that out and get a two or three yard gain. Now, that may not seem a lot, but when you get a two, three yard gain on first down and you get five yards on second, that makes those third downs extremely manageable. And that's exactly what they were doing the whole time. Alex Smith did not have to panic back there. Every third down, he seemed to be, okay, this is third and five, this is third and six. And he was able to make those, those throws or make those runs to prolong the game for uh, Washington and pretty much put a staple in the Dallas Cowboys. I mean, and it's not only the tackling, the angles out there that they're taking, especially in the secondary, they're, they're just not, they're just not going to work. I mean, a couple of times we saw out there, it was a third and 10, I believe, where McKissick had got the ball after only maybe a two-yard catch, turned it upfield. D. Lewis had one of the worst angles I've seen, and he turned the corner and almost scored a touchdown. So for me, we got to get better at tackling. In the secondary, we have to take better angles, or we're just going to continue to see teams just getting extremely big yardages after the catch, and you can't be a winning football team with that. You know, they were seven, and seven for 13 on third downs, and that's because of the poor tackling. If you tackle, you, we had situations where it was third and five. You hit the guy, like he said, behind that line of scrimmage. He drive you four yards. Or you got a pass that is uh, uh, third and maybe nine. We get, they get third and eight. They catch right before the sticks. All you got to do is come up and secure the tackle. And we had a lot of those today. You cannot let that happen. Tackling, when we tackle well, we have a chance to compete. When you don't tackle well, all of a sudden you lose time of possession. They had 34 minutes, to, 34 minutes plus to our 26 less. That's not going to happen for our defense. So you got to play. You got to play. You got to tackle. Yeah, that time of possession battle was huge. A big reason that Washington ended up winning that is one, they tackled very well, but also their defensive line got after this offensive line. When we come back, we hear from Joe Looney and what it was like in the middle of the battle of the trenches when we return on Cowboys OT. Back here on Cowboys OT following the 41 to 16 loss as the Cowboys fall to Washington here on Thanksgiving. And one of the big storylines in the loss were the injuries on the offensive line. Let's hear from center Joe Looney after what he had to say at the point. Joe, how hard was it to 
Bud was uh, just playing the day, considering you know you guys had to take care of Marcus and, and honor him the way you did on the last couple of days. Can you repeat that, please? I'm sorry, Joe. Uh, how hard was it to play today, considering what you guys went through this week with losing uh, Marcus Paul and everything that you guys, you know, did this week for him? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a uh, it's tough. Um, you know, uh, to to lose somebody, you know, so suddenly like that that you see every day, it's uh it's never easy. And um, you know, Marcus loved football, man. He, he loved ball, loved his family, and uh, you know, had his faith. So, uh, you know, it's definitely tough, man. But um, you know, he he made a lot of people around here better men. How emotional were you guys? I think you guys were playing on the field. You know, after warm up, how emotional was that for a lot of you guys? Thank you to lead the team in prayer, I believe. Yeah, it was. Um, it was. It was really emotional. You know, anytime, like I said, you lose somebody so suddenly like that, it's a. Uh, it's really hard. And then um, to see his face up on the jumbotron, you know, and to have him not, you know, on the sideline with us, it's tough. Um, but you know, I think what we did, we tried to just go out there and give it our all for him. And you know, I'm really proud of our guys, man. The way. Uh, you know, the way they fought and honored him. What were your thoughts when Cam first goes down on the first drive and then Zach goes down on the very same drive? Yeah. Uh, it, it's tough. I mean, you know, you, you, you never want to see one of your friends go down, um, you know, let alone a good player like Cam and Zach. But, uh, you know, this, this, this league is tough, man, and we uh, – you know, that's why it takes everybody on a team. You know, that's why it's a team game. Everybody has to, you know, come in and contribute. And, um, you know, I'm really proud of the guys for coming in and stepping up, man, being in the situation we're in, uh, coming in and really, uh, you know, just putting their heart into the game. Losing Zach, what does that do to your guys' unit? I mean, I know it's an X-Men mentality. I know it's tough anytime any player goes down, but Zach, what, what do you mean? that group, um, how would you put in words losing him the way you guys did in the first drive? Yeah, you know, it just, uh, you know, <laughs> you, you never want to see it. Um, you know, Zach's a, a great leader, and, you know, you always want to have uh, your leaders and uh, great players out there on the field. So it's uh, it's tough, man. You never want to see that happen to a guy. And, um, you know, like I said, man, I'm just I'm proud of the way, uh, you know, Terrence came in and stepped in and played. There was a considerable drop-off in the energy and the feel overall of the game after both Cam Irving and Zach Martin went down in the first offensive drive of that first quarter. But, guys, how did you feel about how the offensive line fared in this one? It was ultra tough to replace Martin in the first place, but especially against this defensive front. I mean, overall, I think what they they came in and started doing, I think, is about what we expected. You know, Mm -hmm. I think they came in, you know, you heard Looney say they came in, they fought hard, they put their heart into it. Um, I agree with that. I feel like they did that. Um, there were definitely some t- drop off in execution, mm-hmm. right? We saw Knight getting his butt kicked over there. Montez Sweat was having a field day. Young started gaining his confidence. And y'all know, as we alluded to with Nate, those guys really started building momentum. Um, it wasn't until those fourth quarter decisions that we really saw it, everything just blow up. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. This, this, this sucks overall. I mean, you hate to see it happen to anybody, but overall, they just think it hurts so bad because I think this team finally found that unit. They put all, like, the best five, regardless of position, they put the best five guys on that offensive line out there, and they really started to find themselves. They started to find their stride, and they were playing together as a unit and protecting Andy Dalton and opening up holes for Zeke and Pollard. Um, and to see those guys go down like that and basically have to start fresh with a new group out there after you tried so hard to get back to it, um, it sucks overall, but uh, we're going to have to, you know, get the mind right because, you know, Thursday's coming around the corner and Baltimore is just as tough as Washington. You know, uh, I, I felt even after the injuries because they happened so early, these guys were playing. Just got to call a better, more conservative game and, and, and keep it tight. That way you can help your offensive line, build momentum. You can keep your defense safe and sound. So I think it's all about the play calling now. Are you going to try to swing it all over the place? Or are you going to play a conservative and play it by the numbers? There are a multitude of things that the Cowboys coaching staff is going to have to address here before next Thursday's game. You've got Baltimore uh, coming up on Thursday and something that you're going to have to travel, go on the road in another short week to address a lot of these issues. We'll see where they start when we come back and wrap things up on Cowboys OT. The Cowboys OT. 
presented by the Texas Lottery, was brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Wendy's, Wendy's new pretzel bacon puff cheeseburger at participating Wendy's for a limited time only. NFL Game Pass, you'll never miss a game again. Enjoy full access to coaches film and game replays from week one to the Super Bowl. Subscribe at DallasCowboys.com slash Game Pass. And buy the Texas Lottery. Play the Dallas Cowboys scratch ticket today. It's your ticket for a chance to win big. 41 to 16, the final scores. We take a look at some of the final stats from the NFC East Thanksgiving showdown at AT&T Stadium. The Cowboys concede 21 unanswered points in the fourth quarter. They get dominated on the time of possession, turn it over a couple of times, and that is the doom for the Cowboys here in week 12 of the NFL season. Still plenty to look forward to. You're only a game out of first place still in the NFC East, but Time running out for the Cowboys to try and make a run or make decisions with a lot of these injured players that a couple of them were magnified today. And guys, when we look forward to this week, you've got Baltimore coming up on the schedule. And of course, that's a Thursday game as well. But where do you start if you're Coach McCarthy and this staff, Isaiah? And how do you address some of the problems moving forward? You start by addressing your own faults as a coaching staff. I think, number one, you come out as a, as a coaching staff and you say, hey, we, this is on us. Obviously, we recognize that, you know, you guys had a lot going on mentally. You guys had a lot. Uh, we had some things we had to overcome within the game, but we didn't help you. Um, I think it's very important for them to come in and admit that to the players because the players are out there busting their butt, and I know they feel let down by this coaching staff. Um, and then from that point forth, you just got to go out there and start figuring out exactly what's your game plan for this, for this next game. I know it's like, you know, the, the division title seems like it's almost like the cookies on the top of the, on the, top of the pantry right now. It's like you just can't reach it yet, right? Um, but, you, but you need a ladder, and these boys got to go out there and start building these staircases um, to get to the top. Yeah, I mean, I think you said it correctly. I think these coaches, they need to go in there when they have this team meeting, and they need to take accountability. They need to tell the players, like, hey, you know what? We had some bad calls out there, and that might have cost us the game. Just take accountability for your actions out there. And defensively, I think they have to become better tacklers. they got to become better tacklers, and they got to take better angles to the ball because that was almost as, as embarrassing as their first loss they had up in Washington. And overall, I just think you got to harp on third down. It just was not good enough overall by our offense or our defense. I think our offense was 4 of 13, and that won't get you anywhere um, in this league. And our defense let Washington get over 50% of their third downs. They were 7 of 13 in the money down against our defense. And that's just, you know, that's a formula for a loss. So for me, overall, they got to correct these things. Coaches, you got to take accountability. Players, you got to play better on third down. And defense, you got to tackle. You got to remember who you're playing next week. You, you, you plan on all Madden type team, you know, where they're going to be running the ball, they're going to be a uh, high tempo, they're going to be doing everything. So you don't want to put your defense in a bad way. You have an offensive line that's mismatched. You don't want to put them in a bad way. So you got to play it by the numbers. You got to keep it close. You got to do like Church said. You got to tackle. You got to do like my, my man Stanback said. You got to uh, come in and say, hey, this is what we did as coaches. This is what we expect from ourselves. This is what we expect from you as players and what we need for you. And you got to play this thing by the number because Washington still has Seattle and Pittsburgh on their schedule. Mm -hmm. So if you can somehow, some way get past the Ravens and hope that this team stumbles down, down the line, you still have a shot at getting in there. I mean, it's not over. I mean, and I hate to say this, and I, and I hate ugly, you know, seven and whatever, but the East is still there. You take care of your business this week in practice. Get ready for Baltimore. Do what you can against Baltimore and play game by game, down by down. Today was the third loss for the Cowboys against NFC East opponents. They hadn't had more than two in a single season since 2015 as the Cowboys fall to one in three against NFC divisional foes this season. 41 to 16, the final score from AT&T Stadium. That's going to do it for us here on Cowboys OT. From the star for Nate Newton, for Isaiah Stanback and Barry Church, I'm Kyle Yeoman saying so long. We'll see you next Thursday here from the star. <laughs>